Welcome to the user review of the Sony HXR NX3. As you can see, the NX3 is packed with features. The main feature, of course, is now 1080 50p, 28 megabits per second, and AVCHD. Other notable features are Wi Fi compatibility, the 20 times optical lens, and the very usable digital 2 times extender. I managed to track down Alan McLaughlin, a broadcast cameraman who you can usually not get for love nor money, but at the moment he's off with a foot complaint. So he was only too delighted to take part, simply to take his mind off things. My first question to Alan was, why did he choose the NX3? Well, the reason I wanted to go for the NX3 was uh, as a replacement for the Z5 that I previously had, which I still have, the uh, HDV camera. I was looking for something similar with the same type of lens, same type of capabilities, but purely file-based. So that seemed to be the camera to go for. I looked at the NX5 a few years ago, it was just a wee bit out of my price range, didn't quite do the things that I wanted, so when this came along I looked at the spec and I thought, well that's probably the camera to go for. And how do you find the 1080 50p pictures? The 1080 50p pictures are very, very good. They look very, very smooth, much more detailed than 25p. You get quite, quite a nice filmic effect. At a, you know, a budget price, I would say, and uh, if you're looking to do something with, uh, you know, something maybe a music video or a, you know, a documentary, something in that kind of low budget range, I think 1080 50p is the way to do it, and uh, it looks very nice. As an optical zoom, what do you think of it? Optically, I think the lens on the NX3 is very, very good. Uh, to go from 29mm equivalent all the way up into the 500s with the 20 times zoom, is a very, very useful tool and, you know, for a running gun type camera, you need as much range as, as you can get, as you can get really. So, yes, 20 times, I would consider maybe 14 or 16 times, but if you show me a camera with 20 times at least, then that's probably the one I'm going to be more interested in. And one of the camera's features is the two times electronic extender. How does this compare with cameras, like broadcast cameras that you've been used to? I use a lot of broadcast lenses in my day job as a broadcast cameraman. Uh, anything up to 100 times a, a sports event, uh, 20 times fairly common. Anything in between. Uh, the 40 times extender on the NX3 has impressed me a lot, mainly through the clarity that you get. You think of a, a digital zoom, you think, no, I'm never going to use that because the quality just isn't there. But it appears... It looks very much like, and you'll see it from the shots that I've provided, you'll see that it looks very much like a 40 times optical zoom. Now there's a little bit of uh, artefacting in it, a very little bit, very small bit, nothing that I would say is unacceptable. And uh, when you see just how far you can go with it, it's very, very impressive and it's something I think will be a big selling point for the NX3. Dual record is very useful, but simul record is interesting. Recording onto two cards, but independent start-stop buttons. Can you see a use for this? Well, it's probably not something I would use personally, but if I was in the position of being, let's say, a video journalist or a, you know, a self-shoot reporter and you're out covering an event of some sort, some sort of live action thing, and uh, you know, you've know you got in your head that you need this shot, you need that shot, and that's maybe all you're going to go out and get because you don't want to fill up your card with too much information for your edit, and then something happens that you, know, you didn't consider some spontaneous events suddenly happen. So you've got that peace of mind of knowing that A, if you get all the shots that you need on the one card, that's fine, you ingest that. If that little, you know, something extra happens that you weren't expecting, you know, you've also got it. So yeah, that would be a selling point, you know, if I was looking at video journalism. The built-in video light is 5,500 Kelvin. Can you see a use for this wee light? The built-in light is a nice little bonus feature, I would say. Obviously, as a professional cameraman, I would always say light, you know, light your shots properly. But uh, in a running gun situation, uh, you know, again, maybe in a VJ situation, that could be very useful. Uh, I don't know how many news type reports I've seen where you just can't see what's going on, you know, because there is no light at all. Uh, that will get you out of jail, as they say. Uh, and at 5.5, it's very easy to convert in either direction. Uh, you know, for tungsten or, or for daylight. So, yeah, it's a nice little touch, not an essential thing. The only thing I would say about it is uh, if you are using the supplied microphone 
or any uh, extra microphone, you will get a shadow from it. So you have to be, you have to consider that. But yes, it's, it's certainly worth having. The CM, uh, the ECM VG1, it comes packaged with the camera, I believe, only the EU and the, the UK edition. I don't think you get it outside those, those territories, but very, a very good microphone, uh, very uh, broad range of frequencies. Very neat. It's very neat. Uh, the only thing I would say about that again, and I mentioned earlier, if you're using the front light, there is a risk of a shadow from the mic, so something else to bear in mind. You use the front light, you yeah, do, sort of you do get a slight uh, shadow coming from the microphone. But other than that, the, mic, the light itself is quite useful. Even if it's just helping you to pack up at night, you know, in a, in a darkened uh, concert hall, and you're trying to find those uh, little bits and pieces to put in your kit bag, very useful for that as well. The camera has Wi-Fi. Have you paired it with your phone or Android unit? I have paired the camera with my Android tablet, my uh, Google Nexus 7, which is quite useful. Uh, you get a full screen picture. It's very low res, to be honest. So you couldn't really use it as a, as a detail type monitor, but you can see what's going on. You can also iris the camera with it. You can focus the camera with it, which is nice. You only have to touch the screen on your tablet or iOS, whatever it is, and it will focus on that point. That's quite impressive. You can also uh, record with it. And you can also zoom in and out with it, which is uh, pretty useful. I mean, obviously you would prefer to operate the camera hands-on, but if a, you know, if a situation arose where you've got a remote lock-off camera or you need to adjust something, you can see it and you can reframe it and you can tell what's going on and you can record from it, which is, uh, again, a very useful feature. I the camera up with the uh, Sony Play Memories app, which allows me through Wi-Fi connection through this uh, Android tablet that I'm using to control the focus of the camera, uh, the iris. I can zoom in and out, and I can record as well. So what we'll do now is uh, I'll set the camera to record using this, and we'll do a 40 times zoom out all the way from way over there towards Glasgow Airport to where we are standing on a hill at the top of Paisley, so I'm now setting the camera running, it tells me it's running. You can see from that shot there, that's 40 times. So I will now start to zoom out using the wide button on the screen here. There it goes, hitting it pretty fast. It's coming out all the way, all the way, and just when you think you've got there, there's even more. There we are, that's the, the full width of the, uh, the zoom. So I'll zoom back in from uh, approximately 29 mil all the way in to uh, 40 times clear image zoom that there is the airport car park at Glasgow Airport which is about two miles away from here uh, I'll just hit the focus button if I tap the screen and select the focus point there it is that will now come into focus uh, I can tap the iris control and select an aperture by scrolling along that was a uh, 2.8, let's go to f4 for the sake of it. Tap that and that re-exposes the camera. So it's pretty useful in remote applications if you had a locked off shot, maybe at a gig, something you were doing with an extra camera and you just wanted to monitor it and then uh, also control the camera, that's a very useful function. The only thing I would say about the image quality is it's very low res, so you're not really going to use it as a high def monitor, but uh, it's certainly very useful. Uh, it's a very sturdy head. What you do need, especially if you're going to use the 40 times clear image zoom extender, is you need a very solid head because uh, obviously at those kind of focal lengths, any slight wobble or buffeting from the wind, you're really going to notice it. And you'll see it in some of the shots I did last week with the, uh, the old 501 head. You know, it's great. It's fine for the 20 times range, but 
once you get to 40, you do need a wee bit more, a wee bit more just to, you know, to give you that solidity. So bear that in mind as well. You may need a, a slightly heftier tripod head to use the full uh, 40 time zoom. You, what do you use the most? Have you found it or the LCD? I tend to use the flip out screen more than anything else, purely because it's a bigger screen than the, the little uh, viewfinder on the back, the little eyepiece, and uh, you know there's more detail there. It's, it's much better for uh, focusing and you know assessing exposure and colour, etc. I have used the uh, the eyepiece on the back from time to time. I don't really like it. It's just a little too small for me, and uh, I don't really see that much detail in it. But yes, there are situations where you have to go that you know you have to go down that, that end, and uh, it's okay. But I prefer the screen. I'm not a big fan of these little LCD viewfinders. They're not really detailed enough. But yeah, you can certainly work with it. You can assess focus, you can assess exposure. It will do. Uh, it's not perfect, but you know, for the price point again, and you have to, have to keep re-emphasising that, yeah, what you pay for these things, you have to compare that to what you can pay for other things as well. You spend a lot more money and get a better quality viewfinder, but this is okay. It's fine, it works, and uh, you, you should get the results you need from it. How did the camera perform in low light? I, I ran some tests in low light just last week. Uh, excellent, I thought. I ran some shots in darkness with some bright subjects in the foreground, lit buildings, etc. Riverside scenes, shimmery lights and things, colours. The colours were excellent, I thought. In darkness, you know, I was, I was very impressed with what I was getting out of the, out of the camera colour-wise. Detail-wise, very good. Exposure-wise, I was fairly wide open most of the time. Not zooming in too much, obviously, uh, to keep the light levels as high as possible. Uh, very, very impressed. Uh, zero dB is very, very good. I think you could probably get away with about six or nine dB as well, and it's still fairly useful and not too noisy. Anything above that, obviously, you, you, it will look noisy, but I think compared to previous models, uh, predecessor cameras of the NX3, comparing the noise on various gain settings, I think you'll be quite impressed with what you're getting from it. Is there anything you don't like about the NX3? What don't I like about the NX3? Well, it's the basic sort of things, isn't it? Where's the battery, Sony? You know, where's the battery charger? You don't even get a strap anymore, you know? A strap's very useful to me. A strap is a simple thing. You can go and buy one, obviously, but you know, it's just that thing. Why isn't there one in the box? Where's the battery? I think if I was, if it weren't for the fact I've used Sony cameras in the past and I already have batteries, already have chargers, I may have been tempted to go somewhere else, you know. If I was looking at a camera in that price range, I might be looking at GVC, I might be looking at Panasonic, I might be looking at Sony. And if I see a camera that doesn't even come with a battery, I may be tempted to, to shop elsewhere. That's the only thing I would say, Mr Sony. From a professional point of view, would you recommend this to your peers or who do you think the camera's aimed at? From a professional point of view as a television cameraman, I would suggest it's probably going to be quite popular with the VJ type market, as I've already uh, mentioned. Uh, it's a very good run and gun type camera. I would suggest that maybe if you're doing maybe the sort of 35 mil sensor type shoots, you know, if you're doing music videos, corporate videos, and you want a sort of backup camera, a second unit, it would be excellent for that. You can get some very nice progressive pictures out of it, as I've said.